So our other focal artist this week is Susan Glassville. And she's kind of writing a little bit after uh, the end of the 19th century. She writes this story in 1901. So we're still, I think we're still within our, um, our time frame, and it pairs really well with the yellow wallpaper. So um, we have a kind of regionalist writer, naturalist, not naturalist, uh, realism um, author. And Susan Glassfell, she was born July 1st, 1876, and she dies in 1948. She is a Pulitzer Prize winning playwright and novelist, a writer of short stories, and for a short while, a journalist. Uh, she was born in Davenport, Iowa. She attended Drake University in Des Moines and worked for several years as a reporter for the Des Moines Daily News and other local newspapers. Uh, but she discovered early on that her interest was in writing fiction. Um, her first novel uh, became a national bestseller um, and was raved by the New York Times. So um, she wrote a lot of fiction and um, she was integral in creating a, a um, an American theater company with her husband called the Province Players. Uh, her career, as I said, she was a full-time reporter for um, the Des Moines uh, Daily News and this was extremely rare for a woman to have this kind of job at that particular time. I mean, it, when she's writing for these papers, I mean, she's covering, uh, most of her stories um, were sent to cover the state legislature and murder cases. And keep in mind when she's doing this, women aren't even allowed to vote. So uh, this is kind of a big deal. And the reason I tell you that uh, this so much about her career is because a jury of her peers is inspired by a real life murder that she covered. So, um, I think it's helpful to know the true story behind the fictionalized one. Um, so um, it, it, it's, it was really sensationalized, this murder in um, all over the country because um, on December 2nd, um, 1900, John Hosick, uh, a well-regarded farmer, was murdered with an ax while sleeping in bed with his wife, Margaret Hosick. She was convicted of the murder and sentenced to life in prison, but on appeal a year later, she was released for lack of sufficient evidence. And the mystery of John Hosick's death was never solved um, however, there is a book called Midnight Assassin um, that discusses the real life case, um, and I, I haven't read it, but apparently it's a it's a fascinating read. Um, this is the uh, picture of the real life victim, and there, one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight children. And uh, there is Margaret uh, right there. So uh, husband, wife, and in their family and the house, I assume, in which he was uh, murdered. But uh, Susan Glassbell was um, one of the only um, she was the first to report on the crime, as well as one of the only female journalists covering uh, both the, the murder and the trial. And she wrote a jury of her peers um, based off of, uh, it's a kind of a fictionalized, loose interpretation of um, that experience because um, even though um, it was initially assumed that burglars had murdered the farmer, um, and then Margaret, of course, is arrested, um, 
for 16 months, Glassbell wrote 26 articles covering the case, and she found herself um, during this kind of, of during this this time, uh, be feeling more and more sympathetic for um, the accused, in spite of the grisly nature of of the crime scene. So. Um, Later on, after a uh, jury of her peers, uh, she adapts this play, uh, she adapts the short story into a play called Trifles. Um, this is an example of local color. So dialogue is important. Consider what it reveals about the characters, um, even the ones that we don't ever really get to meet because um, we never get to meet the woman accused of the crime, but she is the focal point of the conversation. And we never really get to see a murder victim, but he is a considerable uh, character that we get to know a whole lot about. So look at the dialogue uh, between the various characters and their, their inner kind of, uh, the inner workings of their mind. Uh, pay attention. To the names. The names are significant because these characters um, often represent stereotypes. For example, our husband in this story is also named John, uh, but he is named John Wright, or as they call him, Mr. Wright. Um, setting becomes important because it is kind of a character in and of itself, and we are confined solely to mainly the home and the kitchen of. Um, Minnie Foster or Minnie Wright as she is um, and there are tons of symbols in this story as well that I want you guys to pay attention to. The other thing that I urge you guys to do as we um, before we come together and talk about each of these stories is to look at the parallels between the two because that's what your discussion board is asking you to do for this week. So. Um, Pay attention to um, all of the things. I hope that you guys like these stories. I really dig them. And um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to um, ask. Um, but that's all I have for you for now. And let me know if, um, like I said, if you have any questions. And I can't wait to talk about these stories with you later on this week.